Folks, so welcome back to Vido's Astro Forum. My name is Vido Oerlemans and we have entered galaxy season. So this gives you the perfect opportunity to capture some of these beautiful spiral arm galaxies like the Pinwheel Galaxy or the Whirlpool Galaxy. And actually I've managed to capture those before in earlier videos. So in this particular video, I'm going to do something different. Actually, some of the most amazing pictures, in my opinion, are the pictures where you can see many tiny galaxies packed together in just one astrophotography picture. So in this video, I'm going to show you my attempt to capture some of the most amazing stretches of galaxies you can find in the night sky, and that is the Mercurian's chain. So let's go. So the Mercurian chain will rise in the eastern evening sky in the constellation Virgo and it will remain visible during the entire night for you to photograph. Now the Mercurian chain is actually named after an Armenian astrophysicist named Benjamin Mercurian. But two of the major galaxies in the chain were already discovered by the famous Charles Messier in 1781. Folks, I thought it would be fun to compare two different pictures I was able to take of Mercurian's chain over the past couple of years. So let me open up the first one. This is the picture I took about two years ago using my apochromatic refractor at a focal length of 480 millimeters. So you can actually see the entire chain of galaxies in this picture. And the second one, this one I took last week. Um, with my Celestron Edge HD at a focal length of 420 millimeters. So you can see only part of the chain is in this picture on the right over here. Every time I open up PixInsight, you, you have tons of questions for me on how I processed my pictures using PixInsight. And I think it would take too long in this particular vlog to explain everything there is to know about PixInsight that would take days. But let me instead point you to two excellent resources that really helped me to get more scaled in PixInsight. And the first one is completely free. Um, it's a website called lightvortexastronomy.com. So lightvortexastronomy.com. Um, I will put a link in the video description below. And this website is, is owned by Kron Mercieka. And yeah, this person is working as an astrophysicist and a mathematics teacher in Gibraltar. Anyways, uh, the website is really wonderful. It shows you all kinds of tutorials uh, in PixInsight to process your pictures, your broadband and narrowband pictures. And I think about 99% of the steps I take are also explained in that particular, on, on that particular website. So that's the first resource. The second resource I'm still reading into is uh, Inside Picks Inside by Warren, oh, I forgot the name, um, Warren A. Keller. So Inside Picks Inside. I think the book uh, is only 20 or $30. Um, so if you're willing to read instead of only watching YouTube videos, um, I highly recommend these two resources. I will put links to these resources in the video description below. So hi guys, let me just show you three main differences that stood out according to me when comparing the two pictures. And by the way, if you have any kind of feedback for me on what picture you like best or any other kind of feedback on these pictures, uh, your feedback is highly appreciated because I noticed that my astrophotography gets better with your feedback. So thank you for that. 
And the first main difference is of course the focal length. So with my apochromatic refractor at a focal length of 500 millimeters, um, I was able to actually catch the entire chain, the Mercurian's chain here, all these tiny little galaxies lined up. Um, so yeah, that's what I really liked about that particular picture, of course. And um, so yeah, let me just zoom in on the part I also captured with my Edge HD telescope. Let me try to rotate it a little bit. I'm always struggling to put them together. So here is my Edge HD picture. So I hope this makes sense. So the second thing I want to say, or the second difference, and this is also what I really like about uh, imaging at a higher focal length, is that with my Edge HD, I'm really able to get these smooth galaxies, these smooth, tiny little galaxies. So let me also zoom in on this. So these are the same galaxies captured with my apochromatic refractor and my Edge HD. And so yeah, my imaging scale on my apochromatic refractor is about 1.5 arc seconds per pixel. And with my Edge HD, my imaging scale is about 0.5 arc seconds per pixel. And I think it really shows when comparing uh, these tiny little galaxies. So I am able to capture uh, these galaxies both with my apochromatic refractor and my Edge HD. Uh, but because I simply have more pixels um, for this particular galaxy, because I have a higher focal length, uh, the Galaxy looks a lot smoother when taking pictures with my Edge HD as compared to my apochromatic refractor. So that's what I really like about my, uh, my Edge HD over my, um, my apochromatic refractor. <laughs> One final thing. So because of this resolution, this higher resolution, when I zoom in on my Edge HD picture, I see all kinds of super faint, tiny little galaxies. You can see here, this is definitely not a star. This is a galaxy, I think. And here, another one. So let me show, maybe this one, uh, definitely here also. This is another galaxy, I think. So this is what I really like about the, uh, the Edge HD picture, that I was able to resolve lots of tiny little galaxies in this picture as well. So. Yeah, let me put them together. So if you have any kind of feedback for me on what picture you liked uh, best, please let me know in the comment section below. And let me finish by showing you both of these pictures in a final video. Clear skies. Thank you.